input with yeah, the content. <laughs> we want to get y'all input in the content today because, again, Coop and I are putting together this 2021 yeah. hip hop yearbook, and we want to make sure that we ain't missing anything, man. Yeah, I love these shows. These are the For the People shows. Definitely, man. This is like the People's Choice show right here. Right, more, more or less. So you want my top five rap albums to kick things off? Yeah, to kick things off. What are your top five <laughs> hip-hop <laughs> albums? And, and you just, also said in, how, in relationship also after that to 2020's top five, correct? Yes, because I know you put together the 2020 list as well. And, um, you know, I just kind of want to get your opinion on that. I'm going to give you my top five uh, hip-hop albums of 2021. And anybody in the chat can do the same thing. But I want to yeah. hear from you, though. Okay, uh, the first thing that I want to say is that my two through five is pretty much interchangeable, in my opinion. If you were to put number five at number two, I wouldn't be mad. If you were to put number three at number two, I wouldn't be mad. If you were to put number four at number two, I wouldn't be mad. But clearly, King's Disease 2 is the best rap album this year. Okay. And it's a clear number one. That's rare that that happens. Usually, that speaks to a down year, but a uh, competitive year and still clearly number one album. So actually deserves extra marks for that, for, for it being clearly the best rap album in, in, in a really dope rap year. It's not 2020, Mike, yeah. but, but it's a good, good follow-up year. It I, I want to piggyback off of what you just said, because I do feel like between you and I, Pray for Paris was a hands down, but there was a point when we even debated amongst ourselves, was it better was uh, From a King to a God from Conway, was that possibly better than Pray for Paris? Especially when he put out the deluxe version of it. That really made us start thinking. Um, and Alfredo was also such a close one there. And I know when we put the post up on According to Hip Hop, a lot of people picked Alfredo over Pray for Paris. Um, I, mean, I, think it's the, I think it's the MC. I think that's the thing. Again, yeah. we were talking yeah. last week about the fact that Freddie was rapping his ass off. And I think that, I think that, how do I say this? I think Westside made the best album that Westside could make with Pray for Paris. How, you, you know, how about this? It's like, Mike, and I told you this, of all the albums that came out last year, I listened to Alfredo the most. Mm. But objectively speaking, all things being considered, you know, I thought Pray for Paris was still put together better. Right. And also, too, part of what made Pray for Paris so beautiful was the contributions. Gibbs was one of those important contributions to Pray for Paris. No, exactly. Like, no, no. The way it was put together. Is it one of, like 1,200 Pound Ounces, isn't that one of the five or six best songs on, on a classic rap album? That's oh, Definitely. Pray for Paris yeah. is different, man. And like we said, like in a previous episode, it feels like we've had this album for years because it yeah, sounds so classic. It doesn't feel like it's just a year and some odd months old. People just don't like, like it's just put together differently. But it's yeah. like I told you, if you told me from a king to a guy was better or Alfredo was better, I can't necessarily knock that because here's what it did. It had both of those albums have over Pray for Paris. They were better lyrically. Mm. Because so you, the MCs were better. It's Conway and Gibbs. And I think that's where a lot of people lean on. But I think that's kind of where it makes this Nas separation a little bit more. Because Nas is Nas. Greatest well, MC of all time in many people's eyes. And he put together a, a great project. And so well, that's really tough to contend with. And the fact that he did it at this point of his career. Um, I mean, and it's an end-to-end play. It is. Hey, Mike, can I say something right quick? Go I'm ahead. one of those guys that lean on lyrics, and I still put Pray for Paris ahead uh, of From a King to a God Now Fredo. Like, I did that intentionally because it's like I'm the guy that usually gives the lyrics the advantage. I'm about to do it today. <laughs> DeCarlo sends a super chat of nine ninety nine. Appreciate you, DeCarlo. He said, what up, fellas? I appreciate the content you guys put out. Also, it's my birthday. Let's turn up. Turn up, Carlo. Happy birthday, brother. Yeah, happy birthday, fam. And we appreciate you. We should be like super chatting you or something. It's supposed to be the other way. <laughs> right, right. right. It's the other way somebody around. Send us your cash out, man. We bless you real right. quick. Somebody, somebody must have hit DeCarlo with a C note early today or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good looking out, man. DeCarlo, what's your favorite hip hop album of the year? And uh, what is your top five? And I know DeCarlo, and I remember, uh, you know, you're constantly in the show. I know you are an Eminem fan. We're going to get to that Eminem topic about Talib Kweli basically saying in a roundabout way that Eminem out rap Nas on uh, EPMD2. We're going to get to that too. But anyway, 
Um, so you got Mike. King's Disease number. Th- I'm sorry, King's Disease two at number one. What yeah, do you Mike, have at number two? So, Mike, in the end, <clears throat> I think the most striking thing about the Nas album is is that he took tracks. Him and Hit Boy made tracks that didn't necessarily, when you first heard them, sound like Nas tracks, and he made them in the Nas tracks, and he made them dope. Like, mm-hmm. 40 Side isn't a record that's usually a dope Nas song. That record's dope, Mike. 40 Side rides. Mm-hmm. And the versatility the on there is impressive. Yeah, like the agility and the skill set, the full skill set is on display in King's Disease too. It's like, no, the songwriter, the introspective guy, the baller, the tech guy. His delivery is updated. His voice is still intact. He sounds fresh. It's, it's not missing anything. It's Hit Boy's best production job. It's the best stuff lyrically he's spitting over a decade. You know, I think the impressive part about it, too, is the fact that a lot of the things that we've always said that Nas wasn't the best at, he, he does very things. well on here. Yeah, Mike, why, like, 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 why KTV still sounds like his record? I don't know how he pulled that off. He could not pull that off early on in his career. He yeah. could not take a record like that and make it his early on. Well, you know what I've always felt about Nas? I felt that Nas is such a writer and such an MC's MC. And you kind of see it with a lot of his earlier stuff when you think about Deja Vu and, uh, you know, and that verse being on Only Built for Cuban Links, Verbal Intercourse. I feel like Nas had like this book of rhymes and he was placing his rhymes with production. And you're going to get different results when you do that. And I think with Hit Boy, the production's coming first and then the rhymes are coming on top of that. At least it feels like that. I don't know what their process is, but as far as like how he's able to... Uh, blend in with the production in ways that he hasn't done in years before. I think that they have more of a producer MC relationship where they're kind of creating and building together as opposed to Nas coming to a producer with a book of rhymes trying to fit some rhymes over a certain beat. You know what I mean? Right, because I think early on in his career, it's like, well, he had so many great rhymes already written. Right. Like, he had so many legendary rhymes already done. It's like, no, 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 no. You got to get those out. However you need to get those out, get those out. And I think what happened, and I think this probably started not with Hit Boy, but probably with Salah Remy on um, on Godson, is because you can hear on Godson, like, it's one of his best projects, but people understate how comfortable he sounds on that album for the most part. Even though some of the records don't come off as well as they do on King's Disease 2, he's still very comfortable on there. So I think Salah did a lot of what Hit Boy did first, which is kind of lay the track and then let Nas rhyme. Like, no, 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 what you got for that? Because I think the prime example for that is Death Row East, Mike. Like, like when I hear Death Row East, I hear that Hit Boy made that track. And it sounds kind of West Coast-ish, which is what put Nas in the vibe to write the story about Pac. Like, he put Nas somewhere and inspired Mm -hmm. him. Like, Nas doesn't get inspired easily. But when he does get inspired, Mike, you hear the results. You hear Made You Look. You hear Death Row East and Store Run. You know what I'm saying? I agree with you. I think him and Salam Remy kind of got that magic first. But they, I guess maybe because of the times we were in, they didn't really get... He didn't really get the opportunity to do whole albums with Nas like he, you know what I'm saying, like he should have back then. How about if, if, if you were to look at the tracks that Salah did with Nas, then look at the tracks that Hit Boy did, it's like Salah would probably have the first two records. That would be Made You Look and Get Down. The next eight records would belong to Hit Boy. Miss Amilla, shout out to you. Sent a super chat of um, eight uh, euros and 99 cents. And uh, she said, big up. Uh, from Brixton, UK. Big up to the UK. We love oh, y'all. Brixton. Yeah, Yo, yeah. So, so Mike, so Brixton is like uh, the uh, <clears throat> what I would call, I wouldn't call it inner city side, but that's where we be at, Mike. Well, shout out to Brixton, man. We, we got to cover some more UK hip hop, man. I've always told Coop, man, like, I feel like I we have to be in somewhere to cover it righteously. I don't want to sit there and cover uh the uk hip-hop scene from atlanta like we got to get over there no, see what's going on and talk about it and we would love to interview some artists from over there and just so we could find out what the scene is like man i no. love the fact that everybody's doing hip-hop from any and everywhere 
Yeah, Mike, you got to catch the vibe because you want to know it. Hip hop still has a look and a feel that's universal. I was mm -hmm. on a train in Paris once and a DJ walked up to me and just started talking to me just because he like could look at me and tell I was related to hip hop in some sort of way. Wow. Like had a whole conversation with me. We traded info like and all that. So like hip hop is real everywhere. Hey, let's Just get the him on the show. Yeah. Let's get him on the show. Yeah, but I feel like the Nas and Salam Remy did have that chemistry first. And I used to give Salam Remy a lot of credit for being able to produce Nas well. I think Major Look was one of the shining moments. Godson actually just celebrated an anniversary too. What, what was that? 20, 19 years. 19 years. That was 2002. And, um, you know, we were asking people on the YouTube channel, like, what was their favorite song, Godson? I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, Major Look hands down but there's a lot of quality stuff on there i loved uh last real nigga alive for a minute that was actually my favorite song from all the back and forth between Nas and jay anyway oh really that's interesting that's interesting. it was i mean i like the way Nas approached it uh he told a story he talked about you know just people chasing the crown and the fact that he was there uh he's the last real nigga alive when it comes to you know big pop Jay and Nas. And I mean, that's where he was going with that. You know what I'm saying? DeCarlo yeah. says his top five is uh, KD2, Hitler wears her man side B, Chump 2, Bo Jackson, and Call Me If You Get Lost. It's a really, okay. very good list. Go it, ahead it, with your That's list. a great list. All of those albums fell in my top 10. We rated Hitler wears her man just by both sides of the way West Side asked. He said it's one project, so we would prefer side B to side A. I believe side B is a top five project, but if we're just weighing it by itself, then it's a top ten project and not a top five project. Yeah. So <clears throat> so I think we've waxed enough about our album of the year, Mike. You want to hear my two, three, four, five? Yeah, 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 definitely. Two, three, four, five. Uh, Mike, Do or Die 2 is why I placed that number two. And I'm, I'm going to tell you why is because it's hard for a rapper that's been in the game this long, that's not a superstar, to make an album of this quality. So I kind of placed Do or Die 2 ahead of the albums that I feel like were just as good as it because I felt like the degree of difficulty was harder and he pulled it off. You put Do or Die Here, 2 ahead of Hitler Wears Herman. So yes, I mean, because it's a more because Mike, I'm like you. I like end to end players. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give the end to end player some love. This is a dope end to end player, and lyrically, he's as precise as anybody in the game is right now. Mike, he's one of the, he's one of the contenders for lyricists of the year. He I'll has some that. of the, he has some of the best verses of the year, Mike. Okay, okay, I'll give you that. All right, but. I said my two through five is all damn near interchangeable. So at number three, I have The House is Burning by Isaiah Rashad. Okay. That's probably my gem this year, Mike. I love The House is Burning. That's at my number three also. But right. my number two is different than two. yours. Yeah. yeah. But Mike, like, <clears throat> when, okay, so for people who are our age bracket and older than us, when they talk about younger MCs and not respecting the craft, and not respecting just like the generation of MCs that came before them. Well, well, there are no issues about that with this guy. This guy respects the craft, respects prior generations. He's doing his own thing. He can spit his ass off. He's been able to spit his ass off, Mike. And, yeah. and, and now he's finally putting it together and making a not good album, Mike, great album. This album is great. The I House feel of like... Rock, Shot is great. I think I told you offline if Kendrick Lamar and I say Kendrick because this is a um, you know this is a TDE release. If Kendrick Lamar would have released the same album that uh, Isaiah Rashad did with the House Is Burning, people would be talking about album of the year, album of the Easy, year. Mike. Easy, Mike. Easy, um, Mike. We would be. How about this, Mike? If if Kendrick Lamar were to re release the House Is Burning. We would literally be arguing every week about that versus KD two for album of the year. We would have been doing that every week. No, the house is burning. It's dope, and house like you said, he's dope. spitting. He's, it's like he has his own style and own lane. Like you said, he respects the things before him, but he's not trying to duplicate anything. Oh. Like he has his own thing, and it's and he's coming carving together it out, very he's well. Carving it out well, yeah, he's carving it out well. And shout I out know. to TDE man for being able to, um, you know, see that there's an artist from Chattanooga 
and be able to cultivate the works and continuously, you know, having him improve what he got going on. Right, like, Mike, yeah, this, this it's is impressive. the type of album, Mike, this is how you get fans. It's one of those albums. It's like, oh, I knew who he was and used to check for him a little bit. No, no, no. Officially a fan now. Now everything that he drops, I'm going to want to hear. It's one of those albums. It's now like when currency dropped pilot talk, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, I was just listening to Address the other day, man. I love that record. Yeah. Yeah, man. Now, nah, no. Isaiah Rashad dropped a very, very dope album with The House Is Burning. And, yeah, I got it at my number three as well. Yeah. So, um, after that, I have Sky Zoo's All the Brilliant Things at number four. Okay. I mean, Mike, there's just a, it's just a great rap album, Mike. Shannon Williams says, uh, my top five for me is uh, KD2, uh, Florin 2, uh, Off Season, The Rick Ross Album, and Chomp 2. I want to get to the chump too. Uh, we're gonna to talk about that too. Yeah. Now I, I'm with you on the um, Sky Zoo. I got Sky Zoo at my number two. I just thought that the production and the brilliant lyricism and the fact that he kind of took this album on himself, I was very very impressive to me. And again, it was an end to end play, and it was one of those albums that, like, once you put on, you're not taking off. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a mood. So can I tell you something though? And, and 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 this is like a splitting hairs thing. And this is why I had it at number four as opposed to two or three. Mm -hmm. I thought lyrically him and A Z were right there, but I thought A Z had a couple of more highlight verses. Just a couple more. And you know, I, I agree felt, with that. I agree with that. I think A Z had a little bit more help help than him. So Mike, that's probably why that. I went the other way. Well, Mike, well, also, too, it's like he also, he had help, Mike, but he also performed extremely well with the help. Definitely. And so I'm going to tell you what, Mike, I would have liked to have heard, and, 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 and I know this is going to seem, this is like some head stuff I'm about to say, Mike, I would have liked to have heard Love the Genius and West Side Gun on Sky Zoo's project, because beat-wise yeah. and concept-wise, I saw him doing some things where I felt like if he was going to have some guest appearances, and I'm bringing him up because he's worked with them before. Like, he, this yeah. is one of the first guys to really work with Conway and Westside before people really knew who they were. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. I I'm think not him and Love Scott. work really well together. Him and Love, the right. Genius, work really well. Yeah, together. him and Love sound beautiful together. So one of my favorite records on there is, like, Something to Believe In. Like, I thought Love on that record would have been flawless and, like, put that, like, in Song of the Year, like, contention, possibly. Um, and, and like I said, he has a prior relationship. So I just would have, when you put it next to the house is burning, I feel like the house is burning is better produced production and beat wise. Okay. And I feel like AZ performed slightly better lyrically, even though some of that was with help. It's like, well, you know, he had help, but he still held his own by himself and he still performed well next to the help. Cause it's like him right next to Conway and Wayne rejuvenated. You didn't, he didn't miss a step. Huh? That's yeah. the best MC in the game right now. And that's a legend. In his own right, and AZ standing right next to them going bar for bar. Like, you're not missing nothing. Like, you're not skipping AZ's verse to get the Conway Wayne and Wayne's verse. No, no, definitely. You know, uh, I, you said The House Is Burning was better produced. I think of at least my top five, The House Is Burning might be the best produced of all five. Mike, actually, I, I was actually about to hit you with something. I think The House Is Burning is the best produced album this year. I think it yeah. is. I think yeah. it is. If we're talking, because when I mean produced, I'm talking about executive production, right? Engineer, the actual production of the beats. So it's like if we're going beat for beat, production, engineering. Yeah, Mike. Okay, so you got KD two at number one. You got um, AZ's Do or Die two at number two. You got uh, the house is burning by Isaiah Rashad at number three. You got Sky Zoo's All the Beautiful Things um, at number four. Yeah. Um, lastly, in, in terms of Mike, even my, even the, the one that I slid to number six, and this is literally the second straight year I'm sliding one of his great projects to number six, Mike. I put Call Me If You Get Lost over Bo Jackson. I went and listened to both of those albums mm -hmm. back to back. And, here, and here's why I gave AZ points, but I also got to take some points away from Boldy for this. Well, it's like, well, Call Me If You Get Lost, the highlights on Call Me If You Get Lost, they belong to Tyler. With the exception yeah. of one Wayne verse, the rest of the highlights belong to Tyler. No, on that's both cool. Jackson, and Mike, it's a great album. It really is. But Mike, the two biggest highlights on the album for me, 
They don't belong to Boldy. They belong to Gibbs on Fake Flowers, and they belong to Rock Marciano on Photographic Memories. Broke generational curses with my cursive. Yeah. <laughs> Rock's a killer, man. Yo, <laughs> Freddie killed that shit, though. <laughs> like, like, so did Rock, man. I mean, oh, that, yeah. That's what... You know I'm a big Rock Marciano fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike, you're, you're a bigger fan than me. So, like, yeah. when I'm saying that, Mike, I was like, as soon as I heard that verse, I was like, yeah, the Gibbs verse is a verse of the year contender, but Rock's verse is one of the best verses of the year. I think and I'm so, going to go listen to Emeralds after the show. Okay. <laughs> this is crazy. So, so when your two highlights on a great album come courtesy of, of your guest appearances, and this other guy made a great album that's comparable, and he's, like, clearly the star of the project, and, and, and doesn't have the alchemist, <laughs> well, right. Well, you know what? Let me go through some of the people in the chat in their uh, top five. So we got SD21 says Nas, AZ, Sky Zoo, uh, ASAP Rock, and Sims. Oh, uh, Mike, we, Mike, I, ha I haven't listened to the ASAP. And that's my fault. People keep telling me to listen to the ASAP and saying we got to listen to it. The ASAP Rock? Okay. Yeah, uh, they said we need to. They said this is better. Yeah, I've been hearing some I, I've been things. hearing a lot about that, too. Uh, no, Don that, Golinary that. says, um, Don says KD2, Tyler, Cole, Hitler West Hermes, uh, part two, eight, part B, I guess, and Isaiah Rashad. Uh, Kay Thompson says, KD2, call me if you get lost the offseason. The house is burning. Ben Staples says top five. And then we got um, KD2, Hitler Wes Herman, eight, uh, Lil Sims, Coop DeGrace, and Bo Jackson. That's from uh, Joe Bros. Hmm. Huh. Let me go to my top five real quick. Go ahead. I got KD2 at number one. Uh, at number two, I got all the beautiful things from Sky Zoo. At number brilliant. three, I got uh, I'm sorry, all, beautiful, all the brilliant things, excuse me. Um, number three, I got Isaiah Rashad, uh, The House is Burning. Number four, I got AZ Doa Die 2. And number five, I think I did what you did. I got Tyler's Call Me If You Get Lost. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I know some people would ask about Chomp 2. Bo Jackson, you already covered that. All right, listen, my thing with Chomp 2 from Russ is just it's just so collaborative heavy. Uh, I think it's a very nice listen, but it's hard to actually, you know, give it credence over people who held down their own project. Um, right. And again, and kind of like what you said with the AZ thing, I don't think there's a song on the Russ album on Chomp 2 where he outshined his feature. And I think that's important when you're not the producer, even though he is a producer, which makes it tricky. I would have viewed this project different if he produced the whole thing. Okay, so Mike, <clears throat> what do you think of uh, Conway's album, Lama Keenan? I thought it was good. I, I don't think that it gave us the replay value that From a King to a God did. I, I no, felt like it was a warm up. Nice. Yeah, so, but but what I'm saying is is, is that, <clears throat> so how do you feel like the features on that album went? Because he had some pretty tough features on there. His mm -hmm. artists are on there, Love and Jay Skees. Mm -hmm. James is on there. Luda's on there. J.I.D.'s on there. What do, I mean, so. I think it was, inter it was an interesting list, West right? And Benny, West Side and Benny are on there. But what I'm saying is, is, is that Conway still owns those records. He does. You know, you know, I was going to go Hitler wears Hermes 8 at 6. And see, my debate was Tyler or Hitler wears Hermes. And I feel like, and I know, I know this ain't what you're talking about right now, but I feel like, and I wanted to address this, I feel like Hitler wears Hermes 8 has more, like you said, standout records. But Tyler has standout records too. Again, it kind of, my list kind of comes down to people holding down their own project. You know what right. I'm saying? And and it's uh and I know we're in a collaborative heavy time, and I think it's great to be collaborative heavy, but it's hard for me to put a project that's collaborative heavy when you're not a producer per se. Like that's this is different than the chronic a chronic two thousand one. It's hard for me to put that over a project where somebody held their own. Like, Tyler was the star of his album. Right. So I have Hitler Wears Hermes 8 at number 7 after Bo Jackson. So. And you know what? The same thing can be said for the Bo Jackson and Hitler Wears Hermes comparison because, uh, you know. Right. 
That's why I have it yeah. at number seven. Because yeah. here's the thing. Baldy held his go, own. Mike, I, I said it when we reviewed it, and I've said it since. Oh, there's not one album that has the bangers that side A and side B on Hitler Wears Hermes 8. Like, if we just, like, Mike, if we just go in the best eight to ten songs, if we were just go the best eight to ten songs, oh, it's winning that. Yeah. It's, yeah, they got Vogue cover, Westheimer, Spoons, Bash Money, Hell on Earth 2, 99, Ava Rex, Free Cutter. Uh, Michael Sanders <laughs> says, Mike, how can I get the hat you're wearing? Uh, you can go to according to hiphop.com and then just go click the shop button. And it should be on there. Pop-up shop. I think this hat's on there. We're good looking out. But, yeah.